Welcome to the WHHI TV Daily News. I'm Betsy McDaniel. As always, there's a lot to talk about today, so we'll get started with a few headlines. Well, it looks like there will be at least one less trial for Alec Murdoch after he has agreed to plead guilty to 22 federal charges that he stole millions of dollars from his clients. The charges come with maximum sentences of 20 and 30 years in prison. Of course, Murdoch is already in prison serving two life sentences for killing his wife Maggie and his son Paul. Court documents show Murdoch has also agreed to pay restitution and surrender a, million, a minimum of $9 million in assets. In exchange, he will have his prison sentences run concurrently with any state sentencing on similar charges. After more than a decade, South Carolina has now obtained enough pentobarbital to create the cocktail necessary to resume executions by lethal injection. There is, however, some legal confusion as to whether or not the 34 men on South Carolina's death row will have a choice of injection, the electric chair, or a firing squad. The last execution in the state was in 2011. In a press release, Governor McMaster says, the state is now one step closer to being able to once again carry out the rule of law and bring grieving families and loved ones the closure they are rightfully owed. The release did not say when the executions might resume or who is first in line. There is still a lot more questions than answers in the crash of that F-35B fighter jet in rural Williamsburg County earlier this week. We still don't know the name of the pilot who ejected from the plane over North Charleston, but apparently was not seriously injured. MCAS Beaufort officials will lead the investigation, saying it could be months before we know exactly what happened and why. We're even getting conflicting reports as to how much the plane cost, with estimates of between 80 and 135 million dollars. The one answer we apparently do have is that amazingly, nobody on the ground was hurt in the crash. The last place you'd think any police officer would want to spend any time is in jail. But 42-year-old, once Officer of the Year, and now former Ridgeland Police Officer, Kyle Horton has been charged with second-degree domestic violence for an incident back in July, while he was still on duty. So he's had to spend at least some time in the Jasper County Detention Center. And some good news out of the school district. For just the third time in 40 years, a Beaufort Public School has been honored with a National Blue Ribbon Award from the U.S. Department of Education. Coosa Elementary in Beaufort is one of five South Carolina schools and 353 schools nationwide to win the Blue Ribbon Award as an exemplary, high-performing school. About one out of three of the 450 students in the elementary school are from military families. The media sources on your screen will have more on these and other stories, and we would love for you to like, like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram at WHHITV. And if you have an idea for a news story, we'd love to hear it, so drop us a line at news at WHHITV.com. And now here's Justin Jarrett with what happened last night in the Loco. Hey, it's time for Last Night in the Loco on WHHI, powered by LocoSports.com. We're almost back to football Friday, but in the meantime, let's check in on some Loco volleyball teams as they roar into region play. LocoSports.com's Wes Kerr was in the tank last night to see a Loco on Loco showdown between the May River Sharks and the visiting Hilton Head Seahawks, who were in a three-way scrap for two of the four playoff spots up for grabs in Region 7-4A. The Seahawks have been a perennial power in the region, but the Sharks broke through for their first win in the series last season and they swept to a 3-0 victory over the Seahawks on Tuesday, winning 25-20, 25-16, 25-21 to even their region record at 2-2. That puts May River in a tie for third place with the rival Bluffton Bobcats, who swept Colleton County on Tuesday and will host the Sharks for a big match Thursday. John Paul II bounced back after losing the first set to beat Hilton Head Prep 3-1 and it skis a 3A region opener, while Buford Academy outlasted Cross in five sets. Whale Branch swept a rare volleyball doubleheader from Allendale Fairfax, and Patrick Henry swept Step of Faith. The big day for May River continued when the girls' tennis team swept Colleton County 6-0, and the girls' golf team won a three-team meet at Pinecrest Golf Club with a score of 179. Ava Cunningham shot 40 to earn medalist honors. For Loco Sports and WHHI, I'm Justin Jarrett. Until next time, go Loco! Thanks, Justin. Now we're going to hand it over to Maria for a look at our weather. Thanks, Betsy. Yep, so taking a look ahead, it does look like that rain forecast for the weekend has cleared up, but we are going to have some rip current warnings in effect this weekend, and we're going to see some high winds as well. So looking at Thursday, it's going to be partly cloudy with scattered thunder showers throughout the afternoon, but it should be clearing up by the evening. Hillness give a high 81, a low of 73. Bluffton's give a high 82, a low of 70, and Buford's give a high 83, and a low of 70.
The sunrise for Thursday is going to be at 710 and sunsets going to be at 721. Taking a look at the beach tides, low tide is going to be at 831 a.m. and high tide is going to be at 220 p.m. Looking into the rest of the week and into the weekend, Friday, again, it's going to continue to be very windy and cloudy with rip current warnings still in effect. Highs are going to be in the 80s, lows in the 60s. Come Saturday, it's going to be sunny to partly cloudy and, again, still windy with those rip current warnings in effect as well. Highs in the 80s, lows in the 60s. And then come Sunday, it's going to be sunny with highs in the mid-80s and lows in the 60s. That's it for today. Let's head back to the desk. Thanks, Maria. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to learn about a community conversation with Alex Brown. Don't go away.